Hello, guys. We are still at South by Southwest doing some more interviews. Thanks to Commissario Tequila. A huge thanks to them because that's the reason we're here. And that's the reason why we could talk about movies that I can't even begin to describe to you right now, like Extraordinary. I, I, I don't even know how to explain this to somebody. So I think I'm going to let you guys do this. And I just want, before you even give a synopsis, I just want to say any synopsis will not do this movie justice in terms of like what you see and the tone of the movie. So I don't know who wants to uh, do the synopsis duties, but what is Extraordinary about? It is, I suppose, a supernatural comedy, uh, rom-com. It's got a lot of those elements. It's about a lonely driving instructor who has supernatural powers and she needs to use her powers to save a uh, virgin from an evil rock star. Played by Will I'm, the ro- I'm the evil rock star. <laughs> so for this one, where did this idea come from? Because there's so, I, it seems to me at least like there's so many different start potential starting points. So what's kind of like the spark that inspired the it whole thing? It was uh, actually a magazine or a newspaper article, a very short one, not as long <laughs> as the film, um, about an older couple who are just have very ordinary people who happen to have supernatural powers. And it's like they... They do this on the weekend inst- uh, uh, on top of their normal jobs. They just kind of go around. Uh, They're like ghost hunters, I guess. Yeah, but the ghosts, the oh. thing about it was the ghosts are actually just not scary at all. They're just kind of, you so know, if you, if you became a ghost, you wouldn't necessarily be terrifying. You would just be still you in ghost form. I started to think about that while I was watching the movie because in most instances, the ghosts are just doing something that they would either want to do if they were still around or just something in their everyday lives. So. I started a picture like, what would I do? And I'd probably just be like home feeding my cat or something. <laughs> you know what? I've just I've just come to a realization that probably most ghosts, like if you're getting haunted by a ghost, you're probably an asshole. Like <laughs> yeah, ghosts just want to do their thing, do whatever. And if if you they're coming to haunt you, it's because somebody wanted to fuck with you when they and like you they have grudges against you. So if you're getting haunted by a bunch of ghosts, you were a, yeah. you deserve probably it. a piece yeah. of shit. What if it's not your Absolutely. fault though, <laughs> and it's just like a pissed off person? That's true. But we we I, I'm developing the theories. <laughs> we we, uh, we watched like we were thinking about ghosts a lot, obviously, when we were writing it, and then we started watching lots of like online videos. And like when you watch that stuff on YouTube, it's always like just a chair falling over, or a, a locker door closing in a school, or a pencil moving. And there are the ghosts and the hauntings, that, like tiny hauntings, are the things that actually people cap capture on camera all the time because they're fake it's never a big demon (laughs) chasing somebody you know so that's the stuff that we really wanted to make the movie about wait so given that comment i assume you're not believers at all because i'm fascinated by this stuff uh we're irish so there are ghosts everywhere in ireland so i think we have to be a believer (laughs) yeah yeah but those videos are fake (laughs) no they're they're real but everything else is uh is a movie well i believe i believe like a, a locker door or a chair falling over more than i believe uh you know a giant demon you made me believe it in the movie um can you tell me a little bit about uh bringing Maeve into the fold here because i know she developed some of the script with you guys she did uh Maeve is amazing stand-up and writer um and me and Ender are huge fans of hers for years we were friends with her we'd worked she made this amazing tv show in ireland that was uh, sort of a cult classic where she she cooked with her sister and it was sort of, it was like stand-up and cooking at the same time it was it was amazing called fancy vittles and me and Ender did the titles for that TV show. We directed them and stuff. And through that, we kind of met Maeve and then we used to hang out a bit in Ireland. Um, and then when we had the idea for this movie, it was always going to be Maeve as the star, like as the lead leading lady. She's just so funny. Um, and we just wrote it with her voice in our heads. And then Maeve came in and took took that and made it even better again, you know, to put her own spin on it. It was amazing. When did the idea for Will to play this part pop up? Like, did you write that with him in mind too? Because I, after seeing the movie, I can't see anybody Don't in that role present but present a question to them in which I have to hear how many people they went through before. We had a really long list. And now when uh, Hanks, <laughs> Hanks said no, obviously. <laughs> Bono said no, Enya said no, and then we went to Will. <laughs> what, what did you think when the script first, uh, you know, crossed your table there? Because were you able to picture it at all? Because kind of like what I was saying at the beginning, I feel like on paper, you don't really feel kind of like that electric vibe and that specific tone of comedy. Well, it, uh, the, the thing these guys did, uh, first of all, I was just in the hiatus for Last Man on Earth, 
and and those seasons are super grueling to do so i the last thing i wanted to do was do any kind of work but i was gonna go to ireland on vacation so i thought geez maybe i i should read this just in case uh and when they sent it they not only sent the script but they also sent a, a like a tiny little teaser that that uh, some of it is actually in the movie it's a lot of the stuff from the beginning like you know or do you see a ghost you know? <laughs> a gravel a gravel uh that 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 thing if you've seen the tree the teaser that's kind of what i saw in the beginning so you you know the tone right away and also i don't know the the tone as i was reading the script just made sense to me anyway so i i was very uh very excited because then i found out that these guys uh were going to be directing it too because you just the script is so full of very specific funny jokes that you knew if if the people who were directing it were also the minds that were able to come up with that kind of stuff that you're in very good hands they're going to like convey that in a really good way because a lot of times somebody somebody could take that script and just make a completely different movie yeah. but yeah. the tone of it i that's one of the things i love so much is to, that tone of that movie is just right very stupid right, right up <laughs> it's so stupid and, and that's my highest compliment it's delightfully stupid yeah. and yes. it's got so much heart too yeah. i mean that yeah. felt like the backbone of it to me yeah. um bringing up that teaser though i was reading that the irish film board funded that and i'm not sure if they were involved in the actual production of the movie but it was making me wonder because i've applied to film funds before and i'm a big horror nut and i know sometimes it could be difficult to kind of like crack that door open so i'm just curious with something as extreme as this does the irish film board embrace that well they've actually they were amazing actually the irish film board um they exist to like nurture talent and um so when they gave us the money to make that it it, uh, it it's actually what unlocked the rest of the funding because when people saw that they went they realized what the movie was going to be like um so yeah, yeah it, was, it was really important we had written the script um and probably had different versions of it for about a year or two you know that we we're playing around and showing to mave and um trying to get funding for it and then the teaser that we spoke about the little short thing was about five minutes long and when we made that which which the irish film board helped us uh do was kind of like a day-long shoot but it just kind of gave you the idea of the movie as soon as we made that teaser people just read the script with that in their minds and were able to just picture the movie much easier and the funding we were able to get funding, funding just flowed in like, <laughs> like we just fucking, <laughs> fucking money at us money couldn't gone. stop giving us you should, they said you should double the budget <laughs> you should tell that to every filmmaker yeah. here I'm they're, sure they're going to be they're in the they're just posting us gold bars here. it was amazing oh my god <laughs> everyone should go make a movie in Ireland it's the best yeah. experience it we're, really we're going to try and drag it back for another movie definitely oh my god I, 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 I sign on without even knowing what the script is extraordinary to a set in hell so <laughs> I feel like that's a totally realistic kind of sequel there. You brought up that you went through a couple uh, iterations of the script here. I'm wondering what changed from draft to draft. Also, because like I walked out thinking I would totally spend more time in this world where the idea and the characters just seem to suit a series format to me. Go on. (laughs) (laughs) No, we feel the same. Um, We when we were writing it, we obviously like. The, mo- the most fun was writing stuff like the kind of procedural hauntings and that sort of stuff that you where she's going out and uh, they're investigating a tiny little thing. Um, so we definitely have loads more ideas that we didn't use in the script that we'd love to you know put into something else or, or work work in the world of extraordinary. And he also um, when you see the film, you, like her dad's TV show was so much fun to make as well. It's like a really small part of the movie, but it's kind of a, a show that's set in the 70s and in rural Ireland where he goes around, you know, explaining different ghosts and hauntings. So there's a big world that we could explore there as well. I think it'd be really fun to go back into it at some point. I like the sound of that. And one of the craziest things about this movie to me is that you guys are first time featured directors and this does not look like an easy production to handle just in terms of, you know, some of the the visual effects you probably have going on all the locations. So is there anything about jumping into your first feature that made you think like, oh, that's how that works or, oh, I didn't know that I needed to do that? Um, well, we knew quite a lot about VFX, actually, and other stuff from making TV commercials, which definitely helped. And I used to be kind of a VFX artist, so that helped also. <laughs> but uh, no, we know quite a lot about that side of things, so I think it wasn't as daunting for us as it may have been had we not done so much of it before. 
I also think that we, you know when you're doing a project like this for the first time, you don't know how scary it's going to be, and you just really want to do it. And I think most people just want to be as ambitious as they can on the first move. You don't have time to to stop and realize that as yeah. well, because every day we ran out of time. Every, every, <laughs> it was really amazing. Every single day, yeah. with with the budget and the amount of stuff to get through in the period of time we had, with first time directors you would think that they would just be going crazy and these guys you never knew how impossible every day was supposed to be because they were so relaxed uh wow. so uh, yeah but. maybe maybe externally but definitely not internally <laughs> we, yeah. we had some uh, some very crazy days when we were running out of time especially towards the there's a big set piece kind of at the end of the movie and towards the end of that we were boat like oh yeah that, that, it, it helped that there was that. two there was help that there was, was two that of our us. last day our yeah. last yeah. day we were like the castle two like, like we had two different rooms shooting yeah, at the same yeah. time, so that but, helped having two directors. I was in room, room, and he was in the other. Was, it was very, oh wow! Yeah, we actually split our like we'd never done that before, but we split it two and like shot stuff. So when we got to the edit, I I saw stuff that ended that shot that I'd never seen. Any <laughs> stuff that I had shot. There's only one bit. It's the bit where we'll fall. Oh, oh spoiler! Spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Spoilers. Sorry. Nobody knows what that means yet. Just I know. The one where he falls, where he falls down the hole, was in a separate room while. Mike was in the other room shooting the bit where sailors giving birth. <laughs> oh yeah, and yeah. I'm they were shooting to, at the same time. I'm supposed to yell. I'm sure your audio guy loved no, this. No, he, he could. He there had no, no mic. Audio so I did just ADR. We, we did yeah. cool Robert oh, Rodriguez wow. on that. He wasn't allowed. He wasn't allowed to shout when he yeah, called. Yeah, so I was home. just. Uh, you know, you're supposed to normally go. Ah, you know, and I was, yeah. just had to do this. <laughs> it was, it was, you sell it quite well. Yeah. It's kind of hard to do. Uh, we, our DOP was amazing as well. James Mather, um, he shot like um, Frank, that movie, and a few other amazing movies. But uh, he was just running in between rooms, <laughs> setting up shots, and then oh, yeah, coming back great. in. Yeah, it was amazing. It was fun. There are so many exactly. specific visuals here where it feels to be like you mapped out quite a bit of it. So what do you go to set with in your hands just to make sure you get everything so that when you piece it together in the edit room it actually flows well for we, that section we were really we, we story, boards. storyboarded like we really had to storyboard all the end of it because it's really complicated um so we storyboarded the hell out of it we walked through it on set like in kind of uh, we actually have a photographic storyboard of us <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, as all the characters shot. in the film yeah. just shot with our iPhones <laughs> oh really and yeah, then we yeah. gave that to a storyboard artist to draw, yeah. draw so we had walked oh. through in, in the actual yeah, location walked through where yeah. like Will would be a shot took a photo of in that, in that place so we kind of roughly knew so it, was, it got confusing though because we'd have to switch because there was only three of us doing it so I would stand in as Christian but then I'd also be Sarah <laughs> so like you kind of remember who am I meant to be in that shot again you need like a I don't know like a wig or yeah. something but we only did that I think in three of the bigger set pieces but the rest of it was just shot lists yeah. so just all the shots we wanted were just written down as opposed to drawn yeah. i like that and idea some of it was just w winging it as well <laughs> yeah, yeah. but like you know it's pretty obvious what to do when it's just two people talking <laughs> um one burning question i have just because i think one of the things that i'm going to remember most about the screening last night is that the person that was sitting next to me Every single time a certain character vomited, yeah. I mean, like, she sunk deeper and deeper in her chair. Her <laughs> eyes, ca her uh, hands were covering her eyes the entire time. That's great. How do you do something like that? What is he actually throwing up? Because that always stresses me out. <laughs> I remember when we were shooting it, we didn't really, it was not meant to be gross out at all. <laughs> like, it was just kind of, um, isn't that how ectoplasm comes out? Yeah, so that's fine. <laughs> and it was only when we did a screening, a test screening, and people were like going, oh, uh, gross. And we thought we actually, well, that I copped on, it was actually quite gross. <laughs> it didn't occur to me. Yeah. It was, it was very funny. It was actually some kind of, um, we did a day in pre-production with Bar with Barry, the actor, Barry Ward. Um, and obviously we knew he had to be uh, spewing up ectoplasm a lot during the movie. So we, we mixed up all different colors, all different weights of it. It's kind of sugary, watery stuff that the makeup department helped us make. And uh, Barry ba baking tried. Baking soda as well. Tried, we did like a camera test and Barry tried out lots of them. But he was a total trooper. He actually enjoyed doing it in a weird way. <laughs> it didn't taste too bad, I don't think. We play this game called Would You Rather? And one of my go-to questions I'm going to pose to you, Will. Would you rather have to fake sneeze or fake vomit in a scene? <laughs> Fake vomit, for sure, without a question. I'm just a bad sneezer. Yeah. It's very difficult to do I mean, a convincing fake right sneeze. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, that was ter that was terrible. Like, and, like yeah, it's awful. But but I'm a better actual vomiter than dry heaver. Like some dry heaving is a really dry heaving is like sneezing for me in that it's just hard to do a realistic 
See, I can't. I can't. There's a there's a subtlety there. I just can <laughs> straight ahead. I I can, I picture the saliva rushing. So you kind of go for a second before yeah. you actually. Oh, that's a good. That's a good. You just uh, think about the saliva going, and your 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 that's your saliva glands kind of oh, tense up. Oh, that's okay. That's interesting. I mean, it works this out is that. why you're a director. Yeah. Um, I have so many more questions, but we have to wrap this up. So I want to tell everybody out there: keep an eye out for extraordinary. I can assure you, you have never seen anything like it. Guys, thank you so much for your time today. Another huge congratulations. Like and share this interview as always. Another thank you to Commissario Tequila for letting us be here and talk about this movie. We will see you soon with more South by Southwest coverage. Thanks, Commissario. Thank you. Thank you.